Hello, my name is Menzim Konza, and welcome back to episode one of season three of the Menzim Konza podcast. For those of you guys watching on YouTube, as you can see, I've got a very, very uh, interesting guest here with me. His name is Timothy Maurice, and we're just going to start the conversation and get into dialogue. But before we actually get into the conversation and dialogue, I'd like Timothy to introduce himself, and then we'll, we'll start off the engagement. So, Timothy, welcome. What's up? What's up, Minzy? It's really good to be in th- one of the first in this season. Um, my name is Timothy Maurice, yeah. and... My work looks at the world through the brain. I'm interested in how stories evolve. I'm interested in how brands evolve. I'm interested in how leaders connect with people through applied neuroscience and behavioral science. So anything that I'm doing, I'm trying to position a story, a person, or a brand in the deepest part of someone's brain your highest stakeholder, whoever you're trying to reach, I'm trying to understand what's happening in that person's brain so that we can plant your idea, your story, your brand in that person's brain at the deepest possible level. Yeah. Already we're starting off with some deep stuff. <laughs> I love, I love, absolutely love this. So, um, Timothy, explain like your journey into getting into uh, branding, especially in, in, in the perspective that you have went, because what we've noticed in the, in the whole branding community, uh, branding sometimes evolves into just like branding and marketing, and then you have somehow went in, in such a deeper way. So how does that uh, journey uh, go about for you? So I'll answer that question in two ways. First, let me tell you a little bit about me and how I got to this point. And then secondly, I'll explain a little bit about the behavioral science movement, the behavioral psychology movement that's happening in branding. So I'll start with a little bit about myself. So I grew up on the East Coast in America. I mean, I didn't even come to Africa or South Africa or the the Southern part of Africa until I was in my 30s. A lot of people don't realize that. So I had built my career and my interest um, in my first chapter of my career was looking at applied image. How does image transform how the world sees you? The second chapter of my career was in my early 30s. I looked at, I was very interested in personal branding because I saw that leaders and individuals had the ability to fundamentally transform and impact and influence the world. This is before the influence of movement. So the second chapter of my career was I picked up on the image and I thought, you know, this personal branding thing could really, really take off. And so I think I wrote the first book about personal branding in the Southern hemisphere, not just South Africa. And after that, I went back to school because I saw something even deeper, which is where I am now, my third chapter of my career. I saw that there was neural marketing was becoming really big, being able to measure what's happening in people's brains when they see a logo, when they see a color, when they see an image, when they engage a story, when they hear something framed slightly different, they make decisions differently. So I was like, let me go back to school. So I went back to school in Boston, spent a couple of years at MIT in Boston, Massachusetts, studying applied neuroscience. And then I studied, uh, did a behavioral science certificate. And I thought to myself, if I can become, which is where the second part of my, your, the second part of my answer is looking at where branding and marketing is now is understanding that you can actually nudge and you can trigger people in a particular direction by understanding their unconscious behaviors and their unconscious mind. So a simple example is this, that one of my favorite studies looks from University of Chicago looks at, if you give two groups of people, group A, group B, you give group A and group B the same script and you see if they can raise funds, uh, see who can raise the most funds for charity. They are told to read the script over the phone to see who can raise the most. What group A and group B doesn't know is that group A has a very faint watermark 
a mark that you can't really see um, of a woman bursting through the finish line. And it's like a woman running, but you can't really see it. It's a faint, faint watermark. Imagine you're reading from this and it's just text, but underneath it, you can see it barely, barely, but not really. The group A who had the faint watermark outperformed group B who did not have the watermark. Mm. And what that's, what behavioral science shows is that the unconscious mind picks up that this woman who's bursting through the finish line is giving me more energy. It's inspiring me to move. Mm. So mm. to be able to design, to create messaging that triggers people's unconscious mind to move more, to engage your brand more, to move towards you is the new movement. Understanding the science of how people make decisions on a very deep unconscious level is where branding and marketing is starting to evolve into because you realize on a very simple level that human beings have higher aspirations and we don't make decisions logically. We think we do, but we don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You say that you mm -hmm. bought a pair of Nike because you think it's a nice shoe and it's durable. But primarily the reason you're buying it is you've got your social swag dynamics, but you also got the idea mm. that you feel lazy and Nike says, I'm going to help you just do it. Mm. And so the, the, the simple idea is that if I can understand people's highest unconscious aspirations and position a message to that dimension and that level, man, you've got a shot of triggering and engaging your customer at a higher level, engaging your stakeholders at a much higher level, engaging the people you lead at a much more deeper, intimate level. Yeah, right. So in the case of just uh, this whole phenomena of branding, right? So what does it actually mean for you? What is a brand and what is actually branding for someone out there who doesn't know? Yeah. So I like to answer the question for the common person and the person working in branding. Yeah. Let me start with the common person, the person who just logged onto this because they like Menzi. <laughs> yeah. So for that person who's not interested in branding, but you came on to this conversation, branding, imagine a branding as the story that sits in your mind that mm -hmm. helps you relate to something or someone. So for right. example, for those of you who don't care about branding, imagine that if you have a child, a small one-year-old, and you come home from work and your one-year-old sees you, what happens? Mm. The one-year-old will throw her arm up to you, like pick me up. Because in that one-year-old's mind, you've branded protector. You're branded, the story in your mind is I know you got me. Now, let's transfer to people who work in branding. I mean, you need a set of patterns, a set of predictable patterns, image, logo, story, messaging, that forms the foundation of that story, right? So you need very specific, very compelling image artwork, assets, that represent the values of that story or that organization or that individual or that um, you know, company. And these assets help form the foundation of a brand and you position that those assets in the deepest unconscious mind. So let's talk about a few brands. You think about Mercedes. When people drive around in a Mercedes, they're driving around with the brand in their mind that it is about elegance. If you think about Volvo, it's about safety. If you think about BMW, it's about experience. So they have to live, they have to articulate this through image, art, storytelling, and all of those and messaging comes together to undergird or create the foundation for the brand. So how does one actually now start to create uh, what I'm getting is the mental capacity in, someone, in someone's mind 
or rather to occupy a space in someone's mind for me to actually start off my my own brand uh what kind of stories do 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 i have to tell in order to relate to this person uh, because you also spoke about how um you've been studying what's actually happening in the southern hemisphere hemisphere and not necessarily south africa but how can we as the southern hemisphere participate in in basically that brand storytelling yeah well the southern hemisphere is big right yeah. so <laughs> so you got to narrow it down and go who am i trying to speak to in the southern hemisphere but let right. me and let me let me follow this question with the father the godfather the mm. inventor of branding right his name is edward bernays mm -hmm. edward bernays is the nephew of sigmund freud he put public relations and branding on his back if it was not for him we wouldn't yeah. even be having this conversation mm -hmm. he studied his uncle's papers because for those who are not familiar with sigmund freud sigmund freud is the father of modern psychology he understood the consuming mind and so when so edward bernays was hired by the us government to try to get people to start spending after world war 1 people were not spending people did not have uh, people were scared because there was war there was pandemics there was problems everywhere so right. the U.S. government needed to get the economy going. So they hired this guy, Edward Bernays, who understood people's deeper subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. And one of the first case studies, I'll share two case studies to answer your question. One of the first case studies was looking at cigarettes. At the time, women did not smoke cigarettes because it was seen as improper. You would be seen as a castaway. 